After 10 years, it is now finally the case that KDE Plasma is there with its new mega release number six. KDE Plasma number six is finally there and I want to show you what this major Linux desktop brings in terms of new features and updates. So let's get started. As you can see, I have this uh, announcement, uh, release announcement text here on the website already. Uh, Plasma 6, Framework 6 and Gear 2402 have been released. And I think the most interesting of them is Plasma 6 because it's the most major one. It took them 10 years to bring out a new major release. And I have it running here, of course, already as you might see it. And if I go into about, you will see that we have here KDE Neon testing edition with KDE Plasma version 6.0.0, KDE Framework 6.0.0, Qt version 6.6.2. This is the yeah, underlying toolkit that it's based on. And this is also in its new version. And even the kernel version is version 6.5 in this case. Why not 6.6? .6? They could have waited until it's also 6.6. .6. Anyway, graphics platform by default is now Wayland, which is the new fancy graphics system that makes everything a little bit more smoother on the desktop. And a nice cool feature you see already is this new floating taskbar. I think they introduced it already with an earlier version of uh, KDE Plasma 5, but now it is the default setting. So if I go a little bit down, you will see yeah, it's going out of the way there, which is like a nice little trick. And also when I go into full screen here, it's um, docking onto the bottom. So that's a nice effect. Talking about effects, we have a new overview effect. So if you go to the top left corner here, you will see the new overview. And the cool thing is here, you can see it's a bit of a mixture of what GNOME, maybe Windows and macOS are doing. So we have our virtual desktops on the top and we have our Windows on the current desktop listed here. And yeah, you can see I'm using OBS for recording. I have the about window here. I could just like, drag it onto desktop two and then go to desktop two. And then I'm on desktop two, which is also quite nice. But don't worry, the overview effect of all your virtual desktops is still there. You just press uh, the meta key and G and you are in this overview where you can see all your desktops and you can just simply switch between those. So this is possible as well, which is quite nice. It's basically the same desktop effect, just in two modes, as you can see here. So if I am in this overview mode here, I can just press uh, meta G and um, in this, as you can see, a nice smooth animation. And with, um, with uh, the um, touchpad, it also works. As you can see, I can scroll with swipe with three fingers to switch uh, between those. And if I have four fingers, I go in this mode. And if I swipe again with four fingers up, I am in this mode and I can swipe down to go into this mode. So it's one fluid animation, especially useful for laptop and touchpad users, which is quite nice indeed. And again, with uh, three or four fingers, I can switch between the desktops like this. So as you can see here, the new graphics platform Wayland makes everything running very smooth. I'm recording here with your OBS with 60 frames per second and it's using software because I cannot for some reason use the hardware here on my Intel card. Um, for whatever reason, if you have difficulties, for example, with NVIDIA systems running Wayland, of course, there's an X11 session still available, but by default, it tries to load the Wayland session. Now let's check out uh, some other features. One of the cool new features is uh, not only the overview effect that you can see here, uh, colors, ICC, high dynamic range, uh, HDR are supported, especially useful for HDR uh, laptops. This laptop here doesn't have an HDR screen, but my Asus laptop has an OLED and HDR screen. So you have the possibility to have this now supported here, which is also quite nice. We have this new wallpaper, which is quite nice. I have this wallpaper here in the light edition, but when I go into settings and you will see when I go into settings that we have a new setting, um, yeah, basically a new coordination of various different setting options here in a new sorting, which is much, much nicer than before. So we have input and output here on top. We have connected devices, internet, appearance and style. In this case, I want to go into appearance and style and I can go and click on wallpaper, for example, to see lots and lots of nice new wallpapers or even like the previous wallpapers. 
that I can set here. And the cool thing is I have now like uh, the possibility to set this for all screens or for different screens. So it would appear differently on my second screen if I have a second screen uh, selected here and I have the possibility to choose various different uh, options here again. As you can see, everything a little bit nicer and easier to understand. You can see also that the theming of the um, of the theme here, the default theme, which is Breeze, has been revamped. Breeze is much, much nicer here in this uh, regard. And all the setting items are much more yeah, logically placed in the settings, uh, system settings menu, like Night Light, for example, is here. And you can choose very easily when you want to turn it on and off which is quite nice. We have a new system sound, which is Ocean, which sounds pretty nice. Let's uh, listen to it. Hopefully it's working. So many of those items sound much, much nicer. Also, volume up and down, much, much nicer. So I like this new uh, kind of system sounds that sound a bit nicer, but if you like the old oxygen, you still have the possibility to use oxygen or even the fallback sound theme, which is free desktop.org here. And then we have different plasma styles that we can choose here. As you can see, Breeze, Breeze Dark are still there. And there's Breeze Light. Uh, the Breeze um, normal scheme is now following your uh, color scheme that you want to set up uh, for your system, which is quite nice. And when we go to our home here, we have the possibility to set up Breeze and Breeze Dark and see what happens if I go to Breeze Dark. I uh, to have apply. You can see not only the system got dark, but also the wallpaper changed and the sun became like uh, here, this asteroid falling on on uh, to Earth or trying to go uh, through the atmosphere of Earth, which is quite nice of a deal. So this is also pretty nice, as you see, for the sake of presentation, I'm switching back to the light theme here. And let's go and check out the next uh, cool thing that we have here. And this is the floating panel. I showed you already that the panel is floating. And the cool thing is if I go down a little bit, you can see it's like docking then to the bottom if a window is hitting there. So we have now the possibility to track the window and behave differently. And together with this option, we also have now a new complete setting to configure our panel. So if we go into the edit mode, we have this new panel setting revamped completely, which is much, much easier to use now than before, especially also if you have a touch screen, the buttons are very, very large. You can see I have set position. I have four different directions. I can set the position of my panel the way I like it. So if I like it on the bottom, top, left or right, very, very easily done. I can choose the alignment here, center or somewhere else. So I can choose left or right here in this case. I can choose the width. It could be fill width. Uh, it could be also fill only the content. So it's getting a bit smaller, as you can see here, or custom, which is quite nice. Fill co fit content is also, I think, a new option that we have here. Then the visibility is also quite new because in contrast to the previous versions, we have now the possibility to dodge windows, which is quite a nice feature. And let me go out of here and I will show you how this works by utilizing this one here. So as you can see here, we have now this possibility to know where this window is. And if I go down here, you can see if I push down a little bit, the window is hiding. So now it's dodging Basically, the window uh, is, is, is hiding the panel. And if I go up again, you can see it will appear again, which is quite nice of a feature. I really wanted to have this also in earlier versions. And uh, this makes the usage, usage of this desktop system pretty nice. And if I go even to full screen, you can see the panel is gone, but it's not completely gone. If I go with my mouse pointer in here, it has like this feature like a hidden panel, but it automatically dodges and automatically appears when I like uh, minimize the window, for example, which is a nice addition, very good uh, window behavior that we have here. And let's go back to the edit mode and let's see what we have here. We have the possibility to set the opacity to adaptive, to, to opaque. Adaptive would mean like it has like a little bit of transparency right now when there's no window. But if I go into full screen window, then it gets uh, fully opaque, which is like um, if you want to have it. Or you can set it to opaque all the time or translucent all the time. Then the style is the floating style or the docked one. By default, we have the floating style. As you can see, the height is still possible to set here with values, with numbers, which is quite nice. So you can press down here or up here uh, to 
yeah, make your panel bigger, larger or smaller. I think 48 might be a nice value as well. And we have a fo focus shortcut. I'm not sure what this is doing here. Click on the button to enter shortcut. Okay, yeah. Um, we can add spaces and we can add widgets, of course. If I click on add widgets, we get the same menu that we have in KDE Plasma 5, where I can just drag and drop some widgets here onto the desktop or onto the panel if I want to. So if I want the clock to be here, I can do it here. I have the, those markers here to uh, scale it up, to position it wherever I like to. I can configure the clock, like show second hand, for example, and show the time zone. And in this case, you can see it's ETC uh, that it's showing me right now. And it's got some shortcut keyboards as well, which is quite nice. Uh, then on top, you can see I have the possibility to add some, uh, again, add some widgets for the desktop, but also add panels. We have the application menu bar. So if you want to still have your menu bar of applications on the top, like on macOS, you have the possibility to do so. And configure desktop and wallpaper is still there. Um, we have the choose global theme option there. We have configure display settings and manage desktops and panel. If I click on this, you can see I have the possibility to say, if I have a second screen uh, to, to, to manage the panels, where should the panel appear, where should the desktop appear and certain elements of the desktop, which is quite nice uh, of an addition there as well. So lots and lots of settings there that I really, really like. Let's check out what we have more there. You can see the, the, the quite detailed announce and release announcements that we have here. Uh, new defaults, very, very important, I think, this new defaults option here, because one of the biggest gripes of many KD Plasma first-timers is that a single click is opening up uh, folders. This is not the case anymore with Plasma 6. So if I go into my uh, folder here, you can see my screencast recording. I have some folder here. A single click is just marking the folder. This makes it coherent and consistent with uh, GNOME, with LXDE, with LXQt, with so many other desktop environments and also other operating systems like macOS or Windows, Haiku, and um, lots of other. Uh, so double click for opening up a folder. When I'm in Dolphin, all right, uh, now already here, you can see I have the split option, of course. One of the cool features is sometimes you want to open up like one folder in split view. So with right click now, we have the possibility to open this in split view, which is quite nice. So I can just drag or go into another folder here and just drag from one folder to another, which is a quite a nice addition. I also like the new effect. Everything looks a little bit, this new breeze theme looks a bit more consistent. There's little drag bars here. Uh, are easier to drag around you can see and it looks a little bit cleaner overall also the icons there uh, are a bit cleaner overall i like it very very much i have to say this new theme then files and folders single click double click touchpad tap to click is enabled by default on wayland this was not the case it's now the case wayland is the default graphical session i told you about it and thumbnail grip is a new default task switcher style so let me maybe open up like a terminal and we switch and you can see this is now the new task bar, task switching style that we have here. That was before I think a panel, of course, a panel here that was switching the tasks. Now we have it in the middle, I think it makes more sense. Clicking on the scroll bar tracks now scrolls on the clicked location is also something yeah, here in Firefox, maybe not so much, but something that is important that wasn't there the case. So if I click here, it's just going to this location immediately. So it's not like uh, just scrolling up a little bit like it was before on KD Plasma. Uh, also a nice, nice little tweak that helps um, the users uh, finding the ways around. Scrolling on the desktop no longer switches the virtual desktops and panel floats by default is also, also nice. And here you can see like the, the refresh breeze, like the old version, how it looked like, look like the bluish kind of uh, edge here around the text editor. And this is gone completely. You can see also it's a bit smaller, everything more refined looking there. The space is done a little bit better. Look at the new open safe, safe as buttons there. Much, much cleaner, much, much better done there. Uh, than before so they really worked also like on the bottom look at the buttons there look at the output there much much better i think the spacing of this pressed button for example a little bit refined as well so i like it very very much this new design reorganized settings i told you about already that the organization of the settings is very very nice so 
much much easier to find stuff there and if you still have an issue you can just search for something like for example uh, you can search for let's search for icons and you will find then the icons very easily which is quite good and uh, let's check out some uh, other stuff like the cube is back so uh, first time it didn't really work let's try it again cube effect it's not working for me right now uh, you have to go into settings and then you have to go into effects let me go back to here and uh, we have window management and there we have desktop effects and there we have the cube option and as you can see here when you press uh, meta and c it should open up the cube but for some reason it's not working now for me um, i i know why it's not working because i only have two workspaces so let's go and open up two others and let's go into the cube mode now we have the cube here and i can switch between the cube modes um, I'm not sure if you saw it, the screen recording has some issues with the cube, there's some special settings still going on with this one, but the cube effect is back, you can see it here in this nice animation. Then the plasma search is much more useful now in this case where you can configure what you want to have on top. Sometimes I want to just have always applications on the top and even if my application and uh, text file have the same name, then I don't want the text file to appear first because I want to start the application quickly just by pressing, uh, what is it, Alt space and then search for VLC, for example. And I don't want a text file that um, is called VLC to appear here. So if I press Enter, I want the VLC player to open up. So this is something that you can configure now under Plasma Search, uh, which one are grouped on top. Uh, so it makes it much much easier then you can see also lots of refactoring has been uh, done here much more faster 200 percent faster search for recent documents up to 60 percent faster search for an application and 30 percent less cpu cycles so yes um, they also did a lot of work under the hood here especially for the plasma search and we have like trigger hybrid sleep from krunner as possible now so that means like in this plasma search we have the possibility to uh, say sleep and we can suspend to RAM here for example which is a nice, uh, nice addition there um, yeah we can also now search meshes text in both our current system language and also in English which is quite, quite nice and some other more things that we have here improve fingerprint unlock I don't have a fingerprint reader here on this laptop but this would work uh, nice and support for more Islamic calendars as uh, included there as well Plasma not only consists of uh, the desktop version, but also Plasma Mobile, and this has been also revamped. You can see some animations and uh, some new features there as well, which is quite nice. I will just skip this right now. What is quite interesting is uh, KDE Gear 2402 brings a lot of new applications ported to Qt 6, which is the underlying graphical framework. And one of them is the Context Suite, and I think they finally fixed some exchange issues that I had, for example, which is quite nice. Uh, so sometimes reporting bugs is really fixing those bugs as well. I know there are sometimes lots and lots of bugs, but it's helping. And we have a nice uh, new user interface also for showing like, if a uh, message is encrypted and so on, which is quite nice. And uh, here you see it, message will be signed, message will be encrypted, uh, much nicer than it was before. We have uh, translation directly in there. So if you want to translate a text, it's possible as well. Itinerary is also a nice uh, option. If you travel a lot, it will automatically give you the information that it pulls out of the events from, from, from an email and put it in your um, calendar, for example, which is quite nice. KD Education applications have been updated as well. Uh, KD in Life, this is my uh, favorite video editor under, yeah, favorite open source video editor of all times, I would say and uh, has been further enhanced. I like this new overview here for, for missing clips, which is quite nice because it now shows you the original path and such things and you can easily search recursively also when you change the folder name or something like this, which is quite nice as well. Sometimes you, you have to do it because your projects are getting too large and you have to move it to an external storage and uh, it helps you now to find this and also uh, has been improved to, thanks to a new MTL um, um, framework. And Dolphin has been improved as well. I showed you a few tricks already with Dolphin. The file manager, Spectacle. Spectacle is the screenshot utility. Let's do a screenshot here. And as you can see, it has a revamped, I, th I think it's a revamped UI. I think they also have it now in KDE Plasma 5. But this one here has not only the op 
option to have like some annotation tools like i can annotate this i can say okay i want to draw a circle around here i can also change the color of the circle to be uh, red for example and then the next one would be red uh, very very nice as you can see here i have some other options there as well even add text if i want to uh, let's do it here this needs to be somewhere else uh, you see it's working quite nice you can save it with my annotations with my especially useful if you want to show someone how to do something as utility and you can export it also um, uh, to some applications or share it directly via your smartphone imager or next cloud which is also quite nice and even print it out if you still use a printer for this kind of thing let's go back here because one thing that is new i think is the possibility to record stuff and this also allows recording of wayland uh, sessions and things and you can see i can choose a rectangular region full screen or window and include the mouse pointer the only thing that i didn't find here is like also in configure when i go to video saving i can choose where to save it which format like webm and vp9 or mp4 and h264 but i cannot set up like i don't see anything here to set up the audio so i'm not sure how this works with the audio this is why i'm recording here with obs right now the same goes for um, the frame rate so it is a quite limited thing but still very useful if you want to show someone how to do certain things on kd plasma you have now the possibility to use this with spectacle directly included here yeah, many, many more things like new recording shortcuts are added and recording quality settings, VB9 encoding for video recording, improved handling, blah, blah, blah. A new chat, new KDE uh, metrics client, client metrics is I think the default chat client for, for, for KDE. We can also um, connect with the developers and ask them questions and such things, which is quite nice, uh, very good network and uh, plasma tube i installed plasma tube here suddenly i think for some reason it is not really working for me but it allows you to um, just play back youtube uh, videos so it's a youtube client basically and uh, it works with uh, invidious so it's not working directly with youtube but it's using a third party and you have the possibility to use various different uh, invidious servers there uh, to playback stuff which is quite nice and uh, play now play next play picture in picture is possible there or share generated qr code uh, shared with twitter and such things so nice uh, youtube client if you want to have a youtube client and you can search here also for plasma 6 and if you speak german for example i can recommend highly the heiser online show that is also reporting about plasma 6 after 10 years and lots and lots of other people are reporting about plasma 6 as you can see, uh, lots and lots of views already. I hope I get also so many views as Nico loves Linux. And also uh, one of my ex-colleagues here uh, talking about KD Plasma 6 in an interview. One of the developers of a very good guy uh, of uh, KD Plasma here. Also highly recommend if you speak German, uh, take a look at this. And lots and lots of other videos here about Plasma 6, which are probably much better, much nicer than my video here so uh, that's basically everything there are lots and lots of other things here like uh, in terms of applications that i've never heard about a mastodon client tokodon uh, which hopefully is all working fine as well and is probably working also as a mobile version and uh, yeah redesign uh, much more for developers kate of course their uh, console and jackwake have been improved as well their console are very good uh, terminal application by default there uh, always available uh, kclark kd connect very very cool that the kd connect this i have to talk about kd connect is like because i have a smartphone channel as well uh, connecting my different smartphones together here with kd connect uh, you don't have it installed here on this one on this machine but it allows you now to also not only use wi-fi so you have to be of the same wi-fi but also blue uh, bluetooth which is quite nice it's a bit slower then but it works fine for, especially for sharing files but it works fine for the basic stuff which might be quite handy if you are out and about and don't have Wi-Fi, um, then you can also be connected, stay connected and see uh, notifications that come in via Bluetooth, which is also quite nice. Also should work more reliable also now in uh, Wi-Fi networks with MDNS, uh, works better in especially blocked environments. Uh, and then we have casts, a podcast player, Elisa, the music player, uh, some community projects as well. There are lots and lots of stuff you can see, some developers and KDE community is very, very cool. 
lots and lots of guys that um, do tremendous work on this desktop. If you're interested in KD Plasma 6, um, besides my video here, you can download live images or docker images with KD Plasma. I would recommend the live images eventually because you can put them on a USB stick, just put them up on your computer, see if it works for you or not. I'm using the KD Unstable edition here that I downloaded, but you can also use, if you like, OpenSUSE more, Krypton, uh, which also should have the newest version uh, or yeah what do we have here chaos um, they ship with plasma 527 so an earlier version plasma 6 i think uh, has to be updated still so uh, i think fedora also has a version with uh, a version with the latest and greatest of kde i'm not sure if it's somewhere here i don't see it like included but it also have i think it's called kinoid yeah kinoid beta it should also have like KD Plasma uh, 6 now available and all the other distributions will get KD Plasma 6 at one point and I can highly recommend this new version because of the little bug fixes, all the little tweaks, all the tunings, the performance much better and uh, yeah those effects are very very nice. By the way you can also delete them, I'm not sure if you can see it, there's a minus button there to delete those desktops, it's not automatically deleting it. So that's everything for this short little video about KDE Plasma 6, the yeah, biggest release of KDE Plasma in the last decade. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you have some questions, write it down in the comment section. That's everything. Until the next time. Bye.